نحن أيضا نعمل سويا أن نملع الفجوات وأيضا ننظر إلى عملية الأسواق وأن نكون أكثر اختيارا فيما يتعلق بموقفنا أيضا في الإجراءات العمل التي نقوم بتنفيذها أنا أؤمن إيمانا شديدا أن لديهم دور كبير وخاصة بالقطاع الخاصة التي تحدثنا عنها ربما تحدث عنها في السنوات القليلة المقدمة ونحن أخيرا أن هناك مبادرة مباشرة فيما يتعلق بالمبادرة لا تبد أن نأخذ من كل الجهات ولابد أن نعمل سويا في كل الدول وأيضا على قطاع المجتمع المدني والمجتمع الحكومي أن توفر وتدعم عملية التخلص من دعم الحقود الاحفوري أنه أيضا يبدأ توفير التشريعات المناسبة لتساعد إلى عملية تحقيق الهدف واحد فاصل خمسة درجة مئوية نحن بحاجة إلى إيجاد الآلية المناسبة أرجح هنا أن نصل إلى عملية التوصيفات المناسبة التي تدعمنا في تحقيق الحياد الصفري وأيضا في تقديم أنه كهدف أساسي لنا ومرة أخرى أشكر المجموعة على مساهمة and on me in particular to help move to the net zero future we need and I thank you. Secretary General Thank you warmly for your leadership, your vision, and setting the way forward. Before we move to hearing from the high-level experts themselves, I will welcome to the floor uh, Mahmoud Mouraldin, who is the high-level champion of COP27. The floor is yours. Secretary General, Minister McKenna, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important report and there are very few reports that we can really describe them as having a before and after. So after the very uh, strong words of the Secretary General and the excellent explanation of the outcomes of this report by Minister McKenna, I'd like to thank her and the excellent team that worked closely with her in order to provide us a robust, credible and inclusive net zero standard. Thank you. On behalf of the Climate Champions team and um, their work, um, which I represent today, when it comes to implementation, we need to see ready candidates to comply with the new rules of engagement, to avoid greenwashing, and I'm happy to listen to the Secretary General mentioning as well the issue of the cost of capital, because developing economies and emerging markets suffer not just from greenwashing and their brothers in the advanced economies, but they suffer as well from green exclusion. Some of these inner students claim that they are green are hard to get because of their cost. So I'm happy that the issue of affordability could be considered and an inclusive approach is being maintained. This report needs to be operationalized. It needs to be taken seriously by regulatory agencies, and it needs to be embraced by the standard setters. For ourselves, as representatives of the Race to Zero campaign, this is the largest alliance rallying non-state actors to take rigorous and immediate action to halve global emissions by 2030. This is a target that we know from the IPCC report is very hard to achieve, especially that we are deviating um, of, uh, from these targets for reasons that we all know from this report and other reports based on science and evidence. Currently, the race to zero is 11,000 plus non-state actors from across 116 countries, more than 8,300 businesses, 
more than 1,100 cities, 52 regions, 595 financial institutions, 1,125 educational institutions, and 65 healthcare institutions. I cited the numbers from my colleagues as exact, not by um, approximation, because everyone counts here when it comes to compliance. We will do what we can, and we have the tools relying on disclosure mechanisms and the standards working closely as partners to more transparency um, for tracking the progress to ensure clear transition plans and to accelerate systems change across the economies. Another aspect of the recommendation that we appreciate, I'd like to explicitly recognize that the needed aligned corporate lobbying with climate targets are fully recognized in the Race to Zero updated criteria. So we are in full alignment with this report and I'm happy to see all of the membership, including the members of the GFANS and the Africa chapter as well of the GFANS, which was just newly born, are adhering to these rules based on the good engagement that we have. Having said that, this is a cop of implementation. We appreciate the work because it's implementable, but this needs political leadership and this definitely needs good um, uh, transparency and disclosure mechanisms that were fully behind you in that and with you in the implementation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now uh, it's time to give the floor to some of the eminent Hageleg members. Um, so now let's hear from Arunaba Ghosh, Bill Hare, Helena Vignes, and Mary Nichols, all here in person. Please take the stage together with Catherine. And I also want to. Um, announce that we have Malango Mugongo on uh, virtual participation and she will also be part of the panel. Uh, well, thanks. And first of all, I want to thank the Secretary General because I wasn't exactly sure what he was going to say. But good news, good news. It looks like you supported our report and you made calls to action that are consistent with it and you have such a powerful voice. Um, and you are always very clear about the need for more ambition and I just really want to thank you uh, for giving me the honor of being chair but also I know on behalf of all of our members your very clear uh, mandate and your leadership in this area. All right, so some of our panelists, I wish we could everyone, but then this event might go till midnight and so I know you have some other things to do. Um, so I'll start with Bill. I don't want to typecast people but he's kind of our scientist. Um, you're okay with that? Oh, good, good news. Um, so look, I mean, what is critically important is that net zero commitments uh, obviously have to start with credible pledges that are firmly rooted in the science. Discuss. Thanks, Catherine, and um, thanks, Secretary General, for launching the process. Um, it's been an honor to work on it. Well, Catherine, I think the first and most important thing that we all know is that getting to net zero is about limiting warming to the Paris Agreement's one and a half degree limit. We know but if we, if we achieve that, we'll still have very serious climate impacts. At 1.1 1 1 .1 degrees now, we're seeing really catastrophic floods in Pakistan, wildfires raging across Siberia, the US, tides and floods affecting small island states, and so on. So to limit warming to 1.5 degrees, we have to get to net zero. But to achieve that, the world has to first make deep cuts at least 50% by 2030. Without those deep cuts, we will not get to net zero by 2050. We won't be able to bend the curves uh, on the emissions fast enough. But net zero doesn't mean, as Catherine said, offsetting emissions and carrying on business as usual. We know this is unsustainable. So offsets should really be reserved for the most difficult to abate sectors. And I guess this is why one of our, the first of our five key principles in the report is for ambition which delivers significant uh, near and medium term emission reductions on a path to global net zero by 2050. Now our recommendations, and looking at the science point of view, 
focused on ensuring our net zero pledges are credible and aligned with limiting warming to 1.5 degrees. In our report, we have a number of recommendations. I can't go through all of them, but some of the key elements of those uh, four net zero goals is that the, to have science aligned net zero goals is first, there needs to be alignment with the IPCC or International Energy Agency net zero pathways that limit warming to one and a half degrees. We need to uh, have stepping stone targets every five years, set out concrete ways of getting there. Now, we also looked at um, some other elements of this. We, we thought about how offsets should be used, and as Catherine's already said, we found that offsets shouldn't be used for uh, non-state actors' own one and a half degree aligned targets. We found that high integrity carbon offset credits could be used and only used for value chain mitigation beyond those targets, but not counted towards the interim emission reductions. We also looked at what needs to be done to phase out fossil fuels and scale up renewable energy for business, financial institutions, cities and regions. We're recommending that all uh, net zero pledges should include specific targets aimed at ending the use of and or support for fossil fuels in line with the IPCC uh, and IEA net zero pathways that limit warming to one and a half degrees. We made a number of recommendations for business, including setting end dates for coal, ending new oil and gas developments, but on the solution side, scaling up renewable energy procurement. For financial institutions, we also had important recommendations that relate to the phasing out of fossil fuels. You'll find them in the reports, I won't go through that. But we did emphasize the need for financial institutions to have end dates for uh, investments for coal in the power sector, for gas, and on the solution side, we also recommended strongly that financial institutions include and emphasize developing uh, clean solutions. That is, they focus on developing and creating investment products that facilitate and are aligned with net zero emissions and facilitate increased investment in renewable energy, particularly in developing countries. Well, thank you very much, Bill. It's good we have uh, these members uh, who are very, very smart, much smarter than me, who can really make sure that we're, we're rooting everything in science. So now we're going to jump to a longtime friend of mine, Mary Nichols, uh, and uh, a former regulator, um, and someone who's dealt a lot with businesses. So can you talk a bit about how credible net zero pledges have to have a plan that aligns with business operations? Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much. Yes, this is on. Uh, it has been a tremendous honor and opportunity to work with this group of people who come from different parts of the globe and different perspectives. Uh, but I think uh, we all came to the conclusion that moving towards regulation, at least to the extent that a voluntary pledge has to be in some way subject to uh, the openness and transparency that you get under a regulatory scheme and has to be aimed at a goal, which is, as you said, Bill, uh, science-based. Uh, um, there has to be a number that you're aiming towards, otherwise it's a percentage of something unknown and unknowable. And so the, the march forward, and it is a march, we know we're in a transition, we know that things will change opportunities will come along, technologies will improve, will improve, thank heavens, uh, because they must. Uh, but they won't improve unless we keep setting firm targets and then we keep implementing them. And the only way we can implement them successfully is through publicly available uh, forms of disclosure of what those who are making these pledges actually are doing. So we called for قاسية في المنطقة من حرائق للغابات إلى فيضانات وسيول خلفت خسائر بشرية ومادية جسيمة ولعلكم تتفقون معي أن المبادرات الطوعية الرامية لحشد الدعم لجهود مواجهة تغير المناخ قد أصبحت إحدى أهم آليات عمل المناخ العالمي لا سيما وأنه قد أصبح من المعلوم أنه على الرغم من المسؤولية الرئيسية للدول والحكومات في هذا الجهد إلا أن الأطراف الأخرى غير الحكومية يمكن لها بل يتعين عليها أن تمارس أدوارا مكملة وداعمة انطلاقا من مسؤولياتها وعمل بمبادئ التعاون والمشاركة 
وهنا تأتي أهمية هذه المبادرات التي تتيح المجال لكافة هذه الأطراف لتنسيق سياساتها وجهودها والحقيقة أن ما يميز المبادرة التي نجتمع في إطارها اليوم عن غيرها من المبادرات والجهود هو المكون العلمي الذي تنطوي عليه والذي لا غنى عنه إذا كنا نسعى إلى أن تكون جهودنا لمواجهة تغير المناخ متسقة مع أفضل العلوم المتاحة بما يدعونا على الطريق الصحيح نحو تنفيذ أهداف اتفاق باريس بما في ذلك هدف الواحد ونص درجة مئوية السيدات والسادة أنني أتطلع خلال اجتماعنا للتعرف على ما استطاعت المبادرة تحقيقه منذ إطلاقها وحتى اليوم بما في ذلك خطة العمل الإقليمية المقترحة والتي أثق أنها ستساهم في تعزيز جهودنا المشتركة نحو مواجهة تغير المناخ في المنطقة كما أتطلع أيضا للاستماع إلى الخبرات والتجارب المختلفة للدول الأعضاء في المبادرة اتصالا بجهودها لمواجهة تغير المناخ على النطاقين الوطني والإقليمي وأنني لعلى ثقة أننا سنخرج من حديثنا اليوم بفهم أكثر عمقا لحجم التحدي الذي تواجهه دولنا وقدر الجهد المطلوب منا لمواجهته أشكركم على حسن الاستماع فخامة الرئيس عبد الفتاح السيسي شكرا جزيلا على حسن الضيافة وعلى هذا التنظيم المتميز